Hey, Ethan again with the third video in the series. And this video is about videos. In just a minute, Jonathan will explain some of the things you can do in the videos tab of our software, including how to get videos into your account and different things you can do once they're in there. But I'm going to start with some frequently asked questions around videos. First up, who's in these videos? You are. Or a team member, a staff member, an employee, or a customer, or a supplier. Anyone can be in your videos. And that's the main reason we built this software. It's all about relationships. It's about people. It's eye-to-eye, -eye, face to face communication. It's about being there in person when you can't be there in person. It's about communicating with all the subtlety and nuance and emotion and all the nonverbal cues that we're wired to read off of one another as fellow human beings and as social creatures. That's the main reason we built the software. Uh, of course, you can use video any other way you'd like. It's just a container. It's a medium. It's a way to uh, package up a message and send it to somebody else. And it's a way for them to consume a message. So you can literally do anything you want to show off your product or your service or your business or your organization or anything else that you like. But really at its core, this software is about people and relationships, uh, as is our company overall. Now, where do these videos uh, happen? Where do you shoot these videos? Most people are shooting in their office or their home office. Some people are going out to parks like this one. I'm at beautiful Garden of the Gods uh, in Colorado Springs, just outside. Uh, our office. We're about five minutes away from my office right now uh, at BombBomb Bomb on the west side of town. So uh, it could be a busy city street. It could be any facility of yours. You could literally shoot this video anywhere you want. So what are people shooting with? Most people are shooting with their smartphones or their tablets or their webcams. The webcam is most common in the office or the home office. The iPhones and iPads or the Android um, uh, smartphone or the Android tablet uh, are most common anywhere else, right? On the go, you can shoot literally anywhere you are. A lot of people use dash mounts and shoot videos in their cars if they're busy working people that work out of their cars a lot. Uh, so you can really shoot anywhere. You can use any device that you want, but those are the most common ones. Beyond that, some people are using camcorders, that little handheld camcorder with the flip out screen that you can get at very common places like Costco or Target or Amazon, right? Other people are using nicer cameras like that nice Canon or Nikon or Olympus or Sony, the nice DSLR, the nice camera that shoots really high quality photos but also shoots video. Some people are using those. Other people are using those inexpensive point and shoots, that much smaller camera. Other folks are using GoPros. Not a lot, but a lot. some people are using GoPro cameras. Other people are still using those one touch simple video recorders like the Flipcam or the Kodak PlaySport or the Sony Bloggy. Now those have mostly been replaced by our smartphones and tablets which have much nicer cameras in them now than they did just a couple years ago. So um, those are mostly being replaced, but people are shooting with all kinds of stuff, right? And then the only deal, if you're shooting with a webcam, you can shoot straight into your BombBomb Bomb account. If you're shooting with the iPhone or the iPad, you can use our uh, uh, BombBomb Bomb app uh, that you can find in the App Store. If you're using your Android smartphone or tablet, you can shoot videos straight into your BombBomb Bomb account. Uh, just go to the Google Play Store and search for BombBomb. Bomb. That's B-O-M-B, -B, B -O -M -B, no space in between, BombBomb, Bomb, and you'll find us and you can download that app. So uh, there's some advantages to doing some of the most common stuff. So um, that's what cameras to use. Let's talk a little bit about lighting. I like to shoot outside because light is free, right? Um, so my basic tips on light are um, the light should come primarily from the front. That would be somewhere in this range here, right? Make a right angle coming out from you at like 45 degree angles. The light should come from somewhere in here. It should come from uh, not too high, not too low. The sun's getting a little high on me. It's mid-morning here. Um, but by noon, it's going to be up too high. Um, same thing goes for your office the, or anywhere else that you're shooting. The light should come primarily from the front and be from not too high and not too low on the horizon because you want kind of even lighting. You also want to try to balance the light. I'm relying on the sun. Fortunately, it's filtered a little bit by the clouds, so it's not too harsh, but it's getting a little bit harsh on me. Um, whereas you might want to balance your light sources a little bit. And your best sign of bad light is shadows. So after you shoot your video, you don't need to reshoot it if you see some shadows, but use the shadows to help you get better over time because when you see shadows, that means the light isn't balanced or it's coming from a bad place. Like too high above, you're going to get shadows down your face, kind of a creepy effect. If the light's coming from too much behind you, you're going to be completely shadowed and your background's going to be blown out. So keep an eye on shadows to help guide whether or not your lighting is decent. Mine's okay. It's getting a little high, uh, but it is slightly filtered by the sun. I like to shoot outside for free light. Um, mornings and evenings are generally best. It's getting a little late on me right now. Finally, last tip here, editing. If you want to edit your videos, this is the ability to um, shoot a little bit here, shoot a little bit there, shoot a little bit over here, or shoot with him, shoot with her, shoot with them. 
and then put all those videos together into one new video. You want to sequence your shots, or if you want to do basic color correction, make the colors more rich or add a little bit more lightness or add a little bit more darkness. You want to do basic color correction, or if you want to add multiple layers of audio, add some music to it, add some sound effects or add some extra video layers to it. Text, like your name, your phone number, your website. Maybe if you're a, a real estate professional, the property address uh, of a home that you're showing off in your video. Or you want to add your logo. If you want to add any other graphics or text or video over the top, a video editing software will, will allow you to do that. And I'll mention four of them in particular. And I'll start with the ones that are probably free preloaded on your device. So uh, if you're a Mac user, you probably have iMovie, and you can buy it as an app. I can't imagine it on an iPhone. Some people do it. I can imagine it on an iPad. I can definitely imagine it on uh, an iMac or a MacBook, uh, and it comes preloaded on several of those, is iMovie. Great tool, and it comes free. You can get it as an app for maybe $10 or so. That's a good one. Now, if you're a PC user, you might look for Windows Movie Maker. I don't love this software, but it's a great way to get started. Most video editors are about the same. That one's a little bit stripped down. It's not amazing, uh, but it's free, so check it out. Look at it. And uh, beyond those two, I'll mention two other ones. The first one is Adobe Premiere Elements. Now, Adobe makes a lot of creative production software, and Premiere is their video editor, and they make an Elements version, Adobe Premiere Elements. It costs less than $100, and it does everything I just described. It's going to let you do everything you need to do. It allows me to do everything I want to do with my videos as well. Um, resequence shots, color correction, add other layers of audio and video, and then spit it all out as one single new video file. Uh, and the other one is Sony Vegas, as in Las Vegas. They have a full product range that ranges from inexpensive stuff, $30, $40, $50, all the way up to several hundred or a couple thousand dollars. So look in that low end to find one that has all the basic features that you're looking for. And again, start with the ones that you already own, and as soon as you outgrow those, just like your camera, right? Use what you already own, and then when you outgrow it, start shopping for what's next. So those are some frequently asked questions around video. Now Jonathan will take you inside the software to show you about the Videos tab. Let's take a look at the Videos tab. In this example, I have two videos that I want to upload to the BombBomb system. One of them I've already recorded and saved to my desktop, but the other I want to record live. Let's start by simply clicking on New Video. Next, give your video a title. And then select Pick Your Video. I browse to the video that I've saved to my desktop and I select it. Next, I see this screen indicating that my video is being uploaded. After my video is uploaded, you'll notice it enters the encoding process. This is when we translate your video into many different varieties so that it can be played in video email all across the globe in any operating system on any device. You don't need to wait for your video to encode to continue working in the BombBomb system. You can click on other tabs and work on your emails or lists, for example. If you ever want to know where your video is at in the encoding process, just browse to it and click right here on encoding for an update. This all happens in the background, and you don't need to do a thing. When my video is finished encoding, I see this screen. From here, I can give the video a new name. I can change where the play button appears on the video by selecting one of these boxes here. And I can even select a new still image to represent my video by pressing on the thumb button here. Once I have things set up just the way I like, I select Save. That's it. My video's ready to go. Now, I also want to record a new live video. This time, I'll select New Video, give my video a name, and select Record a Video Live here. Click Allow, and my webcam will turn on. Now I can record my video using the Record button right down here. Hello, it was really nice to meet you, and I'm looking forward to working together in the future. Talk to you soon. When I'm done, I just click the record button again. 
I click on Save My Recording, and the video enters the encoding process again. In a few moments, my video has finished encoding, and it's ready to go. You'll notice from this screen that you can click Edit to go back and change the name or the thumbnail. You can click Share to share your video to social networks or embed it on a website. You can track the performance of the video by clicking here, or you can delete the video. Notice the social sharing icons over here on the right as well. That's the Videos tab. Thanks so much for watching. I hopefully you found that helpful. If you want more ideas about making videos, I have a full hour that I've delivered as a webinar. You can join a live session uh, if I have one upcoming and scheduled, or you can watch a recording at your convenience. You can do that at bombbomb.com forward slash webinar. And you can see, uh, again, live sessions uh, forthcoming or you can watch a recording at your convenience. So uh, check that out. The next video you're going to see in this training series is all about emails. Now that we have lists in, now that we have videos in, we're going to learn how to make a video email, send it out, and track the results.